For instant reaction to this, we are happy to bring in Howard Griffith, our longtime BTN college football analyst. Howard, when you heard this news a few moments ago, what were your first thoughts? A, a little surprised, but not shocked. Uh, I started to get phone calls really over the weekend with rumors uh, that something like this could possibly be coming, but I really didn't have a way of, of confirming it. And I just kind of sat back and watched it, and then obviously the news came out, and he decided to step down. I think when you, when you start to think about what Coach D'Antonio has meant to Michigan State, as you know, Mike, it kind of follows – when we started the Big Ten Network, so we've been really close to this program. Uh, you talk about stability. You talk about credibility. We've seen him have health scares. We've seen him bounce back from that. We've seen him uh, make some mistakes possibly in recruiting. We've seen him bounce back from that and continue to build this program. Uh, it took the program to a point where they were in the college football playoffs. And, and I don't think people should, when they reflect on his career, should take that lightly and really understand just how difficult it was for him to do what he did. A uh, fiercely loyal head coach to his players and assistants. Uh, and, and I don't know if we're going to see many guys that have the makeup of Coach D'Antonio uh, in the coming years. Howard, what do you make of the timing of this announcement, it being the day before the second National Signing Day? Yeah, I don't think any the timing is never right for stepping down. I would say this, Mike, if, this, if signing day was what it used to be when you just had one this, and this tomorrow is that original date that they would sign, I, I think it could, be some, it could be problematic, obviously. But I think because of the way uh, the early signing period has started to take, his, to take hold in college football, I, I think it's one of those things that they're going to be able to manage. I don't think it's as devastating as it would be had we been using the old system of just one signing day. Well, and he said there, too, his plan is to stay on in the university athletic department for a yeah. role, so that will help make any transition easier as well. Um, Howard, there is a, a, something hanging over all of this, which is the Blackwell case, which is referencing the 2017 sexual assault accusations yep. against some of his players. How do you think that lingering issue plays a part of this? I don't think it really played a major issue in it. Had he stepped down before I think the bonus was due to him, I think you could have started to see some things where maybe that had a bigger role. If he had stepped down before the deposition, that possibly would have meant that or signaled that it was a bigger role. But the fact that he's going to stay on with the university uh, tells me that he and also the university are very confident in what took place and what he said in the deposition and, and what their investigation has shown. Um, so, yes, it, it, it is a cloud. But, but I think the University and Coach Antonio feel pretty good about where they are right now as far as that case is concerned. Howard, where was Michigan State before Mark Antonio took over? <laughs> it was an inconsistent program is really what it was, right? It was a program that could get and recruit and maintain great talent but couldn't consistently win the way Coach D'Antonio was able to do it. You have the up years and you have, you know, things will fall apart. But I think that's what you look, look for when you look at the stretch of time. Yeah, he had some down years, but he was able to rebuild it, make some changes, some tweaks, and continue to move the program forward. And to me, that I don't think people realize how hard that is to do at Michigan State, right? Because you're not Michigan. You're not Ohio State. Penn State had really started to get back to, or really back to where they have been historically with Coach Franklin. So it was a very tough job to me to, to, to have the consistency that he's been able to have throughout his coaching career there. Again, it speaks volumes to who he is. And I, and I mentioned this earlier, he is fiercely loyal. You look at, at as far as his staff is concerned, he didn't want to have many changes there. Whether, and it really didn't work out from an offensive standpoint for him last year going that route. But that's what he believed in. He believed in his players. Uh, he always backed those guys unless it was something that was so negative to the program that it was, he, he couldn't back them. But this is a, a coach that was loyal, and I think his players really understand that. And I think as the coming hours and coming days, you're really going to see a lot of those statements come out from those players of just how important this Michigan State football program and Coach D'Antonio were 
to not only them but their families in uh, their educational process and as they moved on uh, into adult uh, into adult life. Howard, last one for you. I want to get your thoughts on what he was like in terms of his personality as a person. You mentioned you and I and a handful of us came on at the beginning of BTN, and he was just a handful of weeks into being yeah. in charge of the program at Michigan State. We got a chance to know him behind the scenes a little more. I feel like his personality, there was a little more smiling behind the scenes than you would ever see in front of a camera. Yeah, no question about it. I, I think, you know, once he got to know you, he joked with you all the time. Right, once he knew you, but there was a wall there that you had to, I would say, earn your way through. Right, before he would let his guard down, he had to know that you know you were trustworthy. You were gonna uh, really treat the program right, as far as from an analyst standpoint. We weren't gonna take shots at his program. We understood his program. We could pick up the phone if we had a question about something, and his staff and he would, would answer those questions to the best of their ability. So. You know, I think he's a guy that when you see him on TV sometimes, you see that scowl. But when he's behind closed doors and, you know, he is really a joy to be around. And somebody that I know I really enjoy covering. And it wasn't that he gave us everything, because he didn't. But he you know, really trusted us and understood who we were and we had a job to do. And he understood that. So if it wasn't going to affect his program, uh, he would give us whatever we needed, always gave us access, and sometimes when he didn't give access, we understood because it was that give-and-take relationship. And a true professional, as far as I'm concerned, um, and, you know, going to miss having that opportunity to spend time with him in the summer and during the spring uh, as far as being a football coach. I know he's going to stay on in the program, which I think is important, but missing him as far as, you know, getting, getting his team prepared is something that uh, I'm probably going to miss as far as an analyst is concerned. Howard Griffith, BTN football analyst. Thank you for your insight, Howard. We appreciate it. We'll see you tomorrow on signing day. All right. Sounds good.